Good morning, everyone. And of course, with these bright stage lights, I can't see you guys. So if I'm looking like I'm a blank stare, okay, you guys, I admit it, you guys know I can't stand morning, so we'll just leave it at that. But welcome to the 2018 uh, Society Annual General Membership Meeting. And I'm so very happy to see so many people come here. I know that we had to do it due to scheduling conflicts in the morning this time instead of in the afternoon. But I'm glad to see that we have a lot of early risers as well. When I, fir I first thing, it's, it's been my honor and my pleasure to be serving as a society president for the last two years. It uh, has been very enriching for me personally, as, uh, and I hope that I uh, did the same for the society as well. While there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of things that a president has to do uh, each year and, and get things moving in the society, when I first started two years ago, I set across two major uh, objectives for me. The first one was to recognize the fact that our industry was changing and to realize that there's, a, there's basically a gap in something that is a recommended practice versus something that is a due process standard. And with the use of agile processing and DevOps becoming more and more common as we move to software-defined media processing and everything that we do, we knew that we had to identify something else, and I'm very pleased, and you'll hear more about it uh, uh, at, at this session, about our new technical specification process, SIMPTI TSP. And I'm very excited for this. We already have our first document, uh, SIMPTI TSP 2121, which we did in partnership with the DPP. I'm very, very excited about that, and it's been very well received. Along with that, there are other uh, major uh, th uh, accomplishment was given the recognition that uh, the industry is changing so well we really needed to become much more formal in what we did and how we grew as a society two years ago was our centennial year we're entering our next century so who are we what do we mean to our industry where are we going and so I made it a major uh, part of my uh, administration here that we would create a long uh, long-range strategic business plan and I'm very pleased to announce that the board on Sunday has accepted our three-year strategic business plan. And again, you'll hear more about the details of that uh, as it unfolds in this session. A couple of other major comp accomplishments occurred. I believe that many people in this room do very active areas in both our, the, uh, the uh, film and cinema side of our business as well as the television side. We have IMF. The interoperable mastering format has been moving quite rapidly forward and has been really becoming the ubiquitous way of, uh, of the workflows for producing uh, master's content. And along with that, on the television side, uh, and of course it's used for both, is our new SIMPTI standard 2110 uh, professional media over managed IP networks, which rapidly changed how the industry will be doing workflows and I never thought you would see the time when our venerable SDI uh, interfaces were considered old hat and now we have to move to something new. But again, in the recognition of things moving much more to be software defined or virtualized in the recognition that um, the information technology industry has a lot to offer for us. That's really what about. And, it, and when I say 2110, we have to be careful because there's actually an underpinning standard for that which is the SIMPTI standard 2059 suite which is the broadcast um, and professional media uh, definitions building upon the IEEE precision time protocol. So it's very, very important that we've done all activities. And uh, at, at this point in time, I'd like to introduce our uh, executive director, Ms. Barbara Lang. If you would come out. And you are welcome to comment on the fact that if we were going to pick a fourth primary, this would be the fourth primary color right here. Good morning. Wow. I, we had a running joke in the office that there would be not many people here, but Mauricio, you won. You won. You won. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, Matthew did do some explanation. We'll, go, we'll dive into a little deeper. There's so much to talk about. It's empty. Uh, so much exciting stuff to talk about, uh, so we'll get right to it. Um, we, of course, operate under three pillars, and we're going to talk a little bit about each of the activities that we're doing in standards, membership, and in education. So in membership, 
Um, we are uh, really excited that we're seeing a lot more activity at the local section level. Uh, we recently conducted a survey where the number one um, reason to participate in SIMTI was to receive the journal, and right behind it, very close, was having local activity. So it's extremely important that our local sections have what they need and the tools they need to be able to do uh, the fine work. And we're really excited that we have some we have some um, new initiatives happening in the Nordic region um, with a new section forming there or a revitalization of a section. A new student chapter was just recently approved at the uh, board meeting on Sunday. That brings us up to uh, 30 uh, student chapters around the world and we're really excited about that work. And of course our local sections do so much in terms of uh, conference content in Australia. Our DC section does bits by the bay boot camps. Um, trade shows, conference seminars, all sorts of things happening all around the world, and we're really excited and uh, to be able to support them. Membership as an as a uh, as an element of SIMTI is extremely important, um, and we're seeing a shift in the landscape. Every time a company acquires another company, it impacts us. Uh, this is a representation of our diamond level membership, and I think you can see that while we still have the traditional broadcasters and studios as our members, um, you don't see Warner Brothers anymore um, as its own entity because it's been um, incorporated into Warner Media and HBO and Turner. So when that, uh, these th changes happen in the industry, it really does affect us. But we're grateful to see uh, members from the new sector of Amazon and Google, and I'm really pleased to announce that Bloomberg Television just joined at the highest level of Diamond. So we're really excited. And that came through direct connection of a uh, member, an active member in the UK. Really pleased to have Bloomberg Television. Another initiative that we um, talked about at the board meeting that is becoming um, very important in this day and age where there's a lack of, of diversity, certainly in our industry and in many aspects of, of uh, uh, um, industry in general, and we're uh, looking to develop a much more inclusive membership. And one of the actions that the board took on Sunday was to um, uh, agree to create a tactical working group that's going to recommend some very smart, actionable goals, things that we can uh, t actually do to make visible that we are an inclusive and a diverse organization. We need to uh, talk the language and walk the, walk the talk as well. And we're looking at things like program committees, making sure that we have a good balance of diversity on our program committees, our technical, uh, technical committees in the standards domain, in our section leadership, develop a working uh, lexicon of language that we use to ensure that we're um, delivering a proactive message and that we are inclusive. And I think you will see more and more women uh, participating um, in uh, the SIMPTI activities, and later on you'll see that um, a little more in action. As I mentioned, the sections are hosting a number of very important local meetings. These are, not everybody can come to this event, not everybody can get to NAB or IBC, um, but these local organizations are, are truly important to serve that local community. And I must say, I, I try to attend many, and they're always interesting, they're always um, very dynamic in terms of the number of people who attend. I was recently at the New York section meeting last week, uh, Matthew was presenting on um, uh, implementing 2110, and uh, it was a nearly standing room only audience, and that's something that happens all the time. I'm really delighted, and that's something we need to cultivate and, and continue. Later this week, we're going to honor a number of our members. Um, I hope many of you will stick around for the um, awards gala, uh, which we have really upped the production value of that event. It's really a very special evening. It's really the place to honor and recognize so many people who have contributed so greatly in our industry. Our honorary member uh, this year is going to Charles Steinberg. And uh, the Progress Medal, which is so the two highest uh, honors that SIMPTI hands out, is Craig Todd. Many of you know Craig um, from Dolby. And a whole list of, of important people, Robert Neuhauser, Hugo Gaggioni, Tim Vohr, Robert Hyber, David Schwind, Rod Bogart, Merrill Weiss, Sean McCarthy, Phil Laven, John Ross, 
Charlie, Charles Reddy and Peter Stavrianis, just to name a few, and a number of other award winners, Jacqueline Pete Lars, Elizabeth Pieri, and Robin Atkins for their work in the journal. Uh, Nicholas Caro, Thomas Cannon, and Tobias Muller for also their article in the journal. Our young people, um, student paper award winner, uh, Justin uh, Ginsburg and Neil Muva from Stanford. Um, Emily Faw and Catherine Meininger from RIT. Um, and our students, uh, Lou, Lou Wolf Scholarship Award winners, Grace Ani, Annie Urbina, and Jake Zuena. So we're really excited to be able to honor all of these people um, on Thursday. Later today, um, our new class of fellows will be, um, will be recognized at lunch. Um, and if any of you are in the audience, uh, you might raise your hand. Uh, Lars Borg, Franz Dijong, Luke Fay, John Fletcher, Joe Inzarello, Bernard Jenkins, Simon Jones, David Leon, James O'Neill, Pinar Sagasapoon, sorry. Uh, Nigel Seth Smith, John Snow, Wes Simpson, Chris Witham, and Michael Zink. So congratulations to all our award winners. And as I say, on Thursday, you are warmly invited to attend. There are tickets still available. You can get those at the registration. So talking a bit about standards, Matthew went into this already. Uh, Last year uh, or so, about 18 months ago, uh, the board really recognized that if we didn't uh, change and, and adapt to the industry and the, the rapid pace that the industry is going and developing um, different kinds of uh, methods of implementing um, this technology, that we would be left behind. And specifications is an important aspect of that new uh, world view. So while we have a very tried and true due process standards operation um, that is, is consensus built and the industry comes together, uh, we also felt that to be more agile and to adapt to the changing needs of the industry that a specification program would be um, very important to uh, create. Um, it is not a standard, it is a much different um, um, type of, of process and document. But the, the good news is that it's built on our platform um, of or our processes for standards so that if um, that specification uh, does, is determined worthy of becoming a standard, then it's pretty easy to make that happen. And we're delighted that our friends at the DPP had a uh, had a pro had a had a, a, a an example uh, for us to work with. And so the DPP we worked to create not only our first TSP that is now the the, uh, the notation for a technical specification um, called 2121 application for IMF master interchange. Um, we also together worked on the process to enable this um, uh, specification to be delivered. Uh, so we are delighted that we could work with the DPP and they've told us that there are plenty of other sorts of specifications that they would like to bring to SIMPSI to enable and we're looking forward to doing that. And it leads right into IMF as a, as a connection to our colleagues over at the HPA. The HPA has, uh, for a number of years now, created this concept of a user group. It's really the, just what it says, it's the community of users of the various technologies. And they have a very robust user group community. Um, it is the place where the users of this technology can come together, compare notes, talk through problems, figure out. And, and the most important piece is to deliver uh, those uh, issues back to SIMPTI so that we, in our standards work or in the specification work, as the case may be, can deliver those changes as necessary. So it's a really good opportunity for the standards and the user community to have a place to um, work through the issues and, at the end, make those uh, technology uh, resources much more valuable and robust to the community. Just recently um, at the um, Academy, I think it was earlier last week, uh, they uh, hosted an IMF plug fest where this DPP specification was, uh, was put through the paces and I'm told that it passed with flying colors. Is that right, Mr. Devlin? Yes. So it works, and uh, we're really that it, you can't you know doing things just for doing things is not uh, what we want to do. We want to do things that actually work and serve the industry. 
So that leads right into 2110, uh, perhaps, uh, or ST2110 to be precise. Uh, this is, of course, the, the standard for professional media over managed IP network. And for the last several years at NAB and IBC, this has been showcased at the IP uh, showcase, uh, where many, many different uh, parts of the community have come together to uh, make sh to show that it does work. And it's, uh, it's really grown quite rapidly. Um, implementations around the world, uh, Bloomberg TV, for example, is, an, uh, is a, a brand new facility built entirely on the concept of 2110. CBC up in Canada doing the same thing. So we're seeing 2110 actually being adopted and used and um, is a baseline for a lot of things going on in the world. And of course, this is our future. Uh, it's a, also significant because it's built on a partnership of different organizations working together. Uh, that includes the VSF, the AMWA, the EBU, the IBM, of course, SIMPI, and, many, and the AES, and many other organizations who've participated, including vendors and such. So we're really excited about uh, this as a platform. There are many documents that have already been published. Uh, the next level of, of documents are around compression, things of that sort. So uh, keep your eye on SIMPTI because this is, uh, this is going to change and revolutionize. So talking about education a little bit, I mentioned, of course, the, the various uh, section activities uh, from the home office. I'll say we deliver a number of educational initiatives, and we're very excited about our virtual courses. Every year we seem to be uh, adding new courses, and I'm really excited about uh, the work that we're planning for next year on um, technology essentials. Our plan is that uh, we are going to work on a series of, of content together with our um, colleagues at RIT uh, to develop content that is designed to give the essentials um, that is for people entering into this uh, workforce and also people transitioning in their careers. All of this new technology, such as 2110 and IMF, sometimes uh, is a little overwhelming. And we believe that it's important that there is a fundamental uh, baseline of knowledge. And we're really excited about uh, working together with RIT on that. And of course, you will see SIMPTI at many uh, venues around the world, uh, at NAB, um, at IBC. We've been at uh, the SET in, in Brazil. Um, we uh, are participating at uh, Government Expo in, in Washington, DC, um, InterB in Japan. So uh, we are getting the word out there, and we're delighted to have any volunteer who would like to speak on SIMPTI's behalf, because we can't, we can't certainly get everywhere. Um, the journal. The journal is the number one value that our members get from SIMPTI. That's what they tell us. And uh, we're delighted with this publication and the dedication of all the people who are putting it together. Um, the, it's state of the art in terms of, uh, of uh, the content. And uh, we're publishing 10 issues per year, nine of which are in print and um, is online only. And uh, we are working towards a monthly publication, which we haven't had for probably 30 years. Uh, and I think that's a testament to the kind of um, information that's happening, this explosion in the industry, and we're proud that uh, we can publish it in this award. All of our content, all of our IP is available on our digital library. We are hosting that on the IEEE digital library platform. Uh, our colleagues at the IEEE have a booth outside, and I encourage you to uh, have a conversation with them about how to get the best value out of searching for all of searching and discovering and accessing all of the content. So, you're here at a new venue. How many of you are first timers here? Oh, that's good. So you don't know from whence we came. Uh, do you like this new venue? All of you. <laughs> Well, it's change. Um, I think the, the, the thing that I miss the most about the Lowe's, I think it's the only thing I really miss the most about the Lowe's, was being able to be outside. I think I came here on Friday. I don't think I'll see the sunshine until I leave on Friday. Anyway, but we're delighted to be here. Um, it's a new venue. Um, we will be here for at least the next uh, 
two more years. Um, and uh, please mark your calendars for the same week in October and tell all your friends because, uh, as you know, we are bumping up against so many other organizations who have events, but these dates have been fixed for a, um, a number of years already. And uh, in fact, we will start posting the 2020 dates as well. But please do encourage your, uh, enjoy your time here and encourage your colleagues to, to join us. Um, we really want to see this uh, event grow. Um, as it does. Our colleagues at the HPA just want to put a plug in for them. Um, I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, their, their event is um, taking place uh, the week of, of February 11th out in uh, Palm Springs area. It's a great event also. It's a week of, of really diving into technology from a creative viewpoint, uh, talking about uh, media workflows and productions and things of that sort. It's a great event if you haven't attended, and if you can, I really encourage you to join us there. And, of course, uh, just wanted to um, remind you that we have published a book that describes our centennial, 100 years of the uh, magic and miracles of science and technology in motion imaging. And, a, and you may even purchase a copy at the I do want to recognize our staff. Um, we've grown quite a bit um, over the last several years. Uh, we also incorporated our colleagues from the HPA um, in the Burbank office. A, a shout out to two new employees from last time, uh, Carissa Rupnarain, who helps support our standards group, and Thomas Bowser Mason, who is our standards direct, uh, director of standards development. So welcome to them. And Maya Davidovich. Sorry, Maya joined our education group and was very instrumental in putting on the program here. I also want to welcome our new governors. Um, new governors have been recently elected and will be joining us. Um, and here you will see our, our, our movement into diversity because we have two new women on the board, in, uh, actually three new women on the board um, starting uh, in January. So recognize Sylvain Marcotte, I saw him, he's here. Uh, Rose Lockwood, um, I saw her last night. Uh, Marina Kalkanis, who's, I don't believe, here. Tom Murrow, I know he's here. Bill Hayes, I know he's here. Brian Claypool, uh, Mike DeValue, and Seth Hallen. Okay. And then they join our existing um, board members, Paul Briscoe, Ward Hansford, Renard Jenkins, Rick Ackerman, Mark Harrison, Secret Russell, Ben Wagner and Paul Chapman, and Musiaki Sugawara, Jim Berger, Francois Abe, Chris Fetner, and Mike Potter. So thank you and welcome to all those new board members. We also want to thank our outgoing uh, board members who've termed out of their, um, or have termed out, and uh, want to thank you for all your um, work and commitment and finally, uh, before I hand it over to, to our new incoming president, I want to recognize our new executive committee, which will take, um, these are also members of the board, but these are the officers who help guide the um, actions that the uh, board is asking, together with staff, so we work very closely with the executive committee. Matthew will be moving into the past president's role. Uh, Pat Griffiths, of course, will be moving into the president's role. Hans Hoffman will be our executive vice president responsible for um, strategic thinking. Uh, Sarah Cutterly is moving into education, so she will be responsible for all of our education initiatives. Peter Wharton continues as membership vice president. Bruce Devlin continues as our standards guru. Uh, Patricia Keeley is joining us to fill out a term uh, as finance VP. We're happy to have her. And John Furter will be and doing as treasurer. So I thank you all for your time and commitment so much. And with that, and with that, I'd like to introduce Pat Griffiths. Pat is uh, currently the executive vice president, and as I say, the function. Uh, that role is about uh, working on long-term planning and strategy, and we've done quite a bit of work, and, and I'd like Pat to walk you through what the board recently approved on Sunday with respect to our vision. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. And good morning, Los Angeles. And I see a lot of people out there. Thank you so much for coming so early in the morning. Uh, I don't know if the bribes worked or you just really care a lot about SIMPTI hoping for the latter. Anyway, it's my pleasure to talk about um, our strategic planning for Vision 2020. 
Uh, it's been a labor of love. It's been a lot of work. Some said it couldn't be done, but I'm here to report today that we have succeeded, and we're really pleased that we, for the first time, have a plan that goes from the top down. But it's been a long time coming. You see here, we started back in 2016, actually at the time of our 100-year gala celebration, uh, and started looking at some of the issues towards uh, coming up with a strategic business plan, which has our strategy, goals, vision, tied to how we make our investments and how we deploy our staff and our volunteers. It's been a long process, but fortunately the vector overall has been positive. And in fact, in the last uh, months since July, we've made a tremendous amount of progress to complete and approve a business plan actually at the board meeting just this last Sunday. And the strategic business plan has what I call the big five. Uh, of course, in order to put a plan, it would be good to understand where the membership and the industry is going, agree on the language of the plan, specific goals on a three-year basis that translate down into actionable, measurable objectives, the process for implementing those, including things like a marketing plan, which we'll talk a little bit about and is very important for our future, financial, and where we place our investments to help grow the society. And then, as part of this plan, we've actually created an executive summary uh, that with the board approval will now make available to our membership at large. Let's talk a little bit about those. The first, you know, we often hear the thing about what's your mission and values, and I know many engineers roll their eyes, but it's really kind of important to know, you know, what do we stand for in terms of values? Where are we going as an organization? What's our real purpose? Do we understand that? We had a lot of debate about that and then translating those into objectives and then measurable actions. So from the aspirational to the achievable to the specific and tangible. This is really what is the foundation of a strategic business plan, whether you're SIMPTI or whether you're a commercial enterprise. So on those issues of values and guiding principles, uh, back in February of this year, we, the board approved a set of guiding principles. And I hope all of you would see these and agree. We're a global organization that must operate and represent ourselves as such. We talk a lot about it. We are international in scope, but we believe there's a lot more we can do to really make that guiding principle true. But in all our actions, we always look back to that guiding principle. Of course, we have the three, standard, uh, three pillars of standards, membership, and education. And as an organization, we try to be inclusive, representing all different viewpoints. And there's a lot we can do there. And as Barbara mentioned, also supporting diverse viewpoints because research has shown that actually makes an organization stronger. We value and nurture our volunteers. And this is something that's very important to me. And in fact, we take it for granted. And then we realize, no, volunteers, like all of you, are what make us successful. We see, strive to understand the common needs of all of our stakeholders, uh, regardless of level in profession and industry, and also level in time and career, whether young or uh, more mature. We're objective, easy one for us as engineers. We look for the facts first. And then we seek to realize the real and valuable synergies with all our partners, especially HPA, uh, and then, of course, being fiscally responsible to help grow the organization. So with all of that in mind, We've created now a vision. This is actually, Barbara mentioned the uh, 100 Years book. It's actually in the dedication at the front of the book. It seems like a pretty good aspirational goal, and so important, I think it's worth reading, even though you could read it for yourselves on the screen. Enabling the technical framework and global professional community that makes motion picture, television, and professional media available for all humanity to enjoy for artistic, educational, and social purposes. I hope I look at that and go, yeah, I'm there. I, I think that's a great vision for our organization. Hope you feel so as well. And then from that aspirational vision, what's our mission? To drive the quality and evolution of motion pictures, television, and professional media through our global society of technologists, developers, and creatives, clearly with our partnership with HBA. That now becomes a part of our mission by setting industry standards, providing relevant education, and fostering an engaged membership community. 
based on those, what are our value propositions? Why should you be a mem member of SIMTI? Well, for our members, we provide, promote, and nourish professional technical motion picture television, professional media communities through our membership, education, and standards activities. For the industry, we believe we do have a role overall to define, manage, and promote technical standards and specifications by which our industry operates, while educating those on technologies to maximize the quality and ubiquity of the global motion picture television and professional media industry. And for our partners, we provide the resources, expertise, and accreditation to support their cause to further advance the motion picture, television, and professional media industry. So based on all of this, uh, we went through a process, and at times, uh, looking at Barbara, it felt like we were taking two steps forward and one step back. But we persevered, we kept at it. In fact, uh, in some of the surveys, there was a lot of skepticism on whether we could actually put a strategic business plan together. But we didn't give up, we kept at it. And thanks to the work of the board, uh, our executive committee, and importantly, staff as well, we focused our activities on five strategic goals that you see listed here. First, on standards, uh, as our standards VP, Mr. Devlin, likes to call it, creating a knowledge network that actually helps information flow internationally. And the key objective there is to enable ubiquitous access to SIMTI IP. I live in Silicon Valley, and when I talk to a lot of the young engineers, they say, if it ain't on Google, I don't look at it. Well, if you can't get to our standard, you don't even know they exist, it makes it kind of hard to reach out. So that's one of the key strategic goals in our three-year plan. Education, I like to call it more to the core. When you look at SIMTI standards, they're very complex. They're very good. They're utilized. And the more SIMTI standards are adopted, you know, the more value it's clear that we have. Who's the best organization to educate on our standards? Us. And while we do a fair amount as a strategic goal, we are the ones that should be doing that at all different levels. Standards for dummies, standards for executives who have to pay for the standards work, standards for the practitioners. Uh, so we're actually going to double down on that and probably take some of our leading standards. Uh, oh, and I wanted to mention on ubiquitous access to SIMTI IP, we actually make a lot of money on standards. But it's clear there's a trend, and I'm sure many of you have seen it, in the broader industry to make standards free. Organizations like CTA now have vowed to make their standards free. Even the ITUR, which for years charged for their standards, are making them free. So we're facing competition from other organizations, and we're now embarking on a plan, how do we balance trying to get greater distribution while still maintaining our uh, fiduciary responsibilities? And we're working on it. We've got some plans underway, and we'll talk a little bit about those. Membership. Greater interactions among sections. We're in the 21st century. We're in the internet age. Why can't we have virtual sections? And when we, some section does something good, make it instantly available to all our membership. That goes towards our goal of being global. So I'm a big fan of pushing for that, but it requires investment. Operations. With better tools, uh, we can serve our members better. And you'll see uh, we've asked for some investments uh, towards that, achieving that goal. And very importantly, I believe we often market to ourselves. How many of you get numerous emails about this event and other events? But we're, we're preaching to ourselves. How do we do a better outreach to those outside SIMPTI to let them know that we're actually the place to come if you care about the art and science of storytelling? And then finally, harvesting our relationships with partners, notably HPA, but there are many other organizations out there. In fact, one of our challenges is there is no shortage of standards organization or ad hoc industry groups, some of which seem to compete with us. Why did that happen? Why weren't we there? Why didn't they come to SIMTI? So we're going to continue to work more closely with our partners to make mutual benefit. So all very good. So now back to that early part about values, vision, mission, strategic objectives, and then reducing it to action. The way that works in distilling it down you know, you go from the mission, then to the strategies, then to the goals, which lead to objectives, and then actually getting the objectives put in line. So with all of that work from the top down, we then started to look from the bottom up. Uh, well, let me go back here. 
create a plan. And that plan, uh, I'm pleased to report, thanks to Barbara's leadership, we work with staff. The staff each looked at their goals, some of which were very ambitious. They said, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But they found out by working with each other across their silos, they actually could support uh, the, the uh, objectives we have. So really, really pleased with that. The other part of this, uh, with the help of uh, our consultant, Kevin Joyce, uh, he helped us kind of rethink how we run a business. As a nonprofit, uh, sometimes don't have quite the expertise. We don't have the shareholders, although I'd argue all of you are shareholders. Um, to kind of push back on how we manage and run the organization. So we moved to a new notion of using EBITDA, which is earning before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, uh, as a metric, which works well for our organization. And this year, as you'll see in this plan, we have a little bit of a loss, nothing to, to be worried about. But by using this new metric in the plan going forward through 2019, 2020, and now 2021, we actually have a growth uh, based on EBITDA. And in absolute numbers, you'll see it's actually a doubling in, in surplus. We don't talk about profit as a nonprofit, surplus. And uh, uh, pleased that with this plan, and we believe it's very, very achievable. So that's going to put us on a good track to grow. And speaking of investments, uh, one of the things we need to be more flexible is a better infrastructure. So some of the ideas we're kicking around with regard to standards, maybe we use the freemium model. Maybe we make a couple of standards free, like 2110, use it as a teaser. But if you want to get the full complement, come and join SIMPTI and use that as a marketing tool to get awareness. You know, we're not well structured to do that, so we need to upgrade our infrastructure. Uh, also, try to do better marketing to understand a little bit more about our demographics and our membership to understand what needs are being met, not met, by whom, where, what are we missing. So we need some 21st century tools, and that's a big investment in our, in our strategic plan. Getting our website up to snuff. We're clearly outclassed uh, in the commercial world, and we need to be a first-class organization, particularly as we look to get media on the Internet. Uh, to help our technical staff stay current, uh, the idea to create an, an idea lab where they can get um, some technology, maybe it will become value in kind from all of you, so they can understand the technology that we're trying to standardize. Um, streaming equipment, again, to create virtual sections, and uh, the SIMTI that never sleeps, we need to have state-of-the-art equipment, and that takes money. Uh, finally, document management systems. Our standards are a great product. We do a really good job, and now with specifications, we expect We'll get a lot more activity there. We need a world-class uh, document management platform that will help us uh, do a better job of making access to our information easier. And then a management learning system to help with learning more about what are the educational requirements on an aggregate basis so we can better focus where we put our, our money uh, towards building new programs. So finally, with all of this, um, we put together a synopsis document, this is the, the cover of the draft, that includes all the things I described in a lot of detail. Uh, and now with the board approval on Sunday, we plan to publish it and we'll make it available on our website in electronic form for those who want to save trees. Uh, but we also have paper form because the journal's paper and a lot of people like to look at papers still. Barbara mentioned we were quite uh, quite gratified by that uh, conclusion, but paper sometimes has its role. And so with that, I'll turn it back over to Barbara, and thank you very much for your time and attention. Well, I hope you, you will agree that uh, not only is this very exciting time, it's a bit challenging and daunting, but I think um, the, the beauty of this plan is that we really have worked through all the various levels, and uh, I know the staff are very excited, and I know the board is very excited. And I do want to do a call out to Kevin Joyce, who really uh, helped us get that in, in momentum going since July. So thank you. Um, as noted, uh, the funds for this investment are coming from our Next Century Fund. I do want to call out and recognize all of those many organizations and individuals who've given. Uh, substantial uh, funds to support this. Um, we 
and launched this Next Century Fund back um, in, actually in 2014, 2015, in advance of our centenary. And uh, we've put it a little bit off to the side while we focused on getting this uh, business plan together, but uh, we will renew our efforts to complete the, um, the uh, quest on our uh, in, uh, Next Century Fund. Our goal was $4 million, and I'm pleased that we have um, almost $1.8 million, not only pledged, but actually um, uh, committed and received. So I'm really delighted, and I want to thank all these um, companies and individuals for their contributions. And I'd like to call out a special individual who I hope could be your inspiration. Peter Weitzel, many of you know, I know he's in the audience, has been really the driver behind this huge success of the UK section and now region. Um, and just to give you a little explanation, a section can become a region when it has a sustained over 500 members. And so that is really due in a great part to Peter's um, um, commitment and investment personally, uh, time and funds in making that section grow. And Peter called me uh, not too long ago and said, I've, uh, I've made a decision in my um, estate planning, and I would like to make a donation to Cynthia. And I'm going to announce that he's donating $30,000 himself to support this business plan. <laughs> Peter, uh, he's sitting right there. Uh, Peter's a great friend um, and has been a, a, a mentor to me in many ways uh, in my travels and helped guide me through um, all that goes on in, in the UK business, I should say. And one of the things that, that Peter likes to say is join in, join us. And so I'm going to close and say join in, join us. Join us in exercising this business plan to its greatest potential. And thank you for being a member and encourage your colleagues to do this. Thank you very much.